Okay, so for those of you looking for that perfect shore fluking rod, this video is for you. We're going to quickly go over some key features on why these rods are so good for fluking. And then the rest of the video is going to be some late season fluking action from shore 2018. Now, I've used a lot of different types of rods in the past for shore fluking and the one that's most recommended are the salmon steelhead rods which in my opinion are pretty terrible for jigging they have very soft tips very moderate tapers and they're usually quite heavy now these are japanese suzuki rods and many companies make them but the first one that i've tested is the shimano dialuna this is their second generation rod. They revamped everything in 2018. This rod is 9 foot 6. It's rated 8 to 45 grams. So on the low end, you're talking less than a quarter ounce, and it, and it throws that perfectly. And I would say it tops out around an ounce and a quarter. Anything beyond that, you can still get it out there, but you kind of have to lob it. Now, most fluke jigging that I do lies between quarter ounce to maybe half ounce, three quarter ounce at most. So this, this lure rating is absolutely perfect. Now, they did an extremely good job with this handle design. It's an up lock with their CI4 Plus reel seat, but the way they contour that foregrip, it's, it's perfect. It has a full suite of Fuji SIC guides and high power and spiral X, which is Shimano's kind of cross carbon weave blank technology. That kind of puts this blank in the same category as their x series, which is pretty surprising considering the x are listed at $270 to $280, and you can buy this rod for around $250 shipped from Japan. So, it is death sensitive, um, surprisingly sensitive. But in any case, here's my cousin's rod. This is the Daiwa Labra AGS. And the AGS stands for Air Guy System. You're going to see that in just a second. You can also see that he does not take care of his equipment. And that is some sand that got in there. And then when you tighten up the nut, it scrapes against terrible. But in any case, this rod has been on the market for, I think, five or six years. So it's probably due for a refresh. And it's also about $100 more expensive than the Dialuna. In terms of action, it is slightly faster through the tip section than the Shimano rod. It comes with an integrated hook keeper, which the Shimano rod does not. But here is the AGS guys. This is Daiwa's air guide system. The frame of these guys are made from carbon fiber. And this runs throughout the whole rod, except for the tip. The tip is a SIC titanium tip top. Now with the AGS guys, you're definitely saving weight. But more importantly, according to Daiwa, it just transmits vibrations better than any kind of metal alloy guy train so my cousin thinks his Daiwa is an exceptional rod I've used it a couple times I have to agree they are slightly different as I said the Labra feels just a little bit faster and crisper but the Shimano being six inches longer I feel is almost better balanced but he might disagree Okay, so we're going to get a quick weight on both of these rods. And the first one is the Dialuna. Remember, this is 9 foot 6 rod rated to an ounce and a half. And it does have that little Fuji hook keeper, but can't see that making too much of a difference. So this rod weighs 5.2 ounces. And Moving on to the Daiwa Labra, again this is a 9 foot rod rated to 50 grams, it is 5.09, 5.1 9, ounces. And the reels that we both use to pair with these rods 
are the Daiwa Ballistic 4000 LT and fully spooled up with 15 or 20 pound J braid it weighs 8.43 ounces. So you're talking about a rod reel combo that weighs in the neighborhood of 13 ounces total weight which makes a huge difference if you're jigging the way we jig all day. And my cousin's going to demonstrate this briefly before we move on to the fishing footage. Now the first thing you notice is he's gripping with all fingers in front of the reel stem. And I do the exact same thing on the Dialuna. This grip position gives you the best balance for jigging. Now the most important thing to notice here is how his rod butt is not wedged up against his side. It's not tucked under his armpit. He's free handing this rod. He's free handing this setup. Now, if you have a rod that is so heavy or tip heavy that you have to do what he's doing now, which is tuck it under your armpit to get leverage just to jig, then your rod is too heavy for fluking, in my opinion. Now, this is important for two main reasons. The biggest one is sensitivity. If you have a balance setup that you can hold in one hand without any other part of the rod touching your body, you're the most in tune to changes in pressure from your jig. So when a fluke comes and stops your jig on the way down and you're on complete slack line, you're more apt to detect that type of pressure bite with your rod just floating in your hand versus tucked under your armpit. That's true for any kind of fishing. Um, when the butt of your rod is leaning up against your body or wedged up against your body in any way, it just mutes all the vibrations. And in my opinion, you don't want that when you're fluking. Some of the biggest fluke we've caught, they hit the jig on the way down, and if you don't set the hook right away, they're gone. The other thing is jig action. You can get much quicker tip acceleration on your rod when you're just using your wrist. And we don't jig quite the way John Skinner does with his rapid jigging or as my cousin calls it, jiggling method. We're very deliberately popping the jig off slack line. But having said that, the movement is still very small. We're not moving the jig more than six to 10 inches at a pop. So that crisp and precise jigging motion that we're trying to impart on the gulp, on the lure, in my opinion, you achieve that through a balanced setup that you can manipulate with just your hand and your wrist and not your whole upper arm, upper body, which you have to do if you're tucking it under your armpit. Okay, so I hope that makes sense. And holding the rod this way, there's a limit. As you go heavier in total weight of your setup, you're going to discover that it's not possible. There's some quote unquote Suzuki rods on the market today that weighs eight and a half, nine ounces, which that's great if you're looking for a light striper rod slash fluke rod. But if you're only looking for a fluke and maybe Albi rod, in my opinion, those, those are not what you're looking for. You're looking for a four and a half to five and a half ounce rod, period. Okay, so let's move on to the fishing. And the first couple of clips are from earlier in the season in 2018. This is the first generation Dialuna that I talked about before. And it was a little bit underpowered. I'm using a 3 8 sounds jig head with a five inch Kitek Easy Shiner. And you guys can check out those videos from my channel. They're they're pretty cool. I mean, I don't think I'll be using Easy Shiners as much this year, but um, they're at least as effective on keeper size fluke as gulp from shore, in my opinion. All right, so here's the first cast, and in some of these areas, 
you can get away with a very short rod. You can use a six and a half to seven foot freshwater spinning rod. But in this location, you have to get beyond the channel edge. And that's why you still need a quote unquote surf rod. Eight and a half to nine and a half feet. Here I'm just kind of gently popping the jig along the bottom and first cast. What the yeah, that was the first cast. Gold color. Oh yeah, this one keeps. Oh. Lucky fish. So all the fluke you're going to see in this video were keepers and they were all released. Reason is at this point in the season we've had quite a bit of fluke already and I've done two or three catch and cook videos with my cousin but mainly I resolved not to freeze anything I catch. So if I couldn't get to it within two or three days I don't keep it. Okay, so this is pretty late in the season, and this is literally the first cast I'm taking with the new generation Dialuna, the 9.6 medium. So that last fish was definitely over 20 inches, it might have been over 21, but I didn't have my tape measure that day. In any case, these late season fluke, they're much thicker than the early season fish. I think they're, they're, they're chasing peanut bunker, snappers, and possibly mullet. I didn't see any mullet that day, but I think the mullet might have just started to run out of the bay.
Now this might be the thickest, fattest fluke I've ever held in my hands. Um, again, no tape measure. I'm going to say it's definitely over 22 inches. It might be a hair over 23. And yeah, just a very healthy late season fish that was lucky enough to meet me in a catch and release mode. Yeah, and this happened quite often. People want to know what kind of rods these are. I think my cousin gets it every single time because of his AGS guys, and you just don't see that very often here at all. And speaking of my cousin, here he is with his Daiwa Labra. He's checking out his 6-inch gulp grub for any bite marks, and he's going to send it out. I'll leave a link in the upper right hand corner to one of his solo fishing trips. And as you'll see, his jigging method is a little bit different. Now, we both use different jigging methods all throughout the day, but his default is to pop the jig up, hold it high, and let it swing back down on tight line. And it is very effective. And this one did come home with him. And as you'll see, he bled it out very nicely in the surf. He took the time to do that. And I'm pretty sure this one ended up being in one of our catch and cook videos. Okay, so I hope you guys enjoyed that. Found it informative at the very least. You got to see some fluke fishing in March. So yeah, if you guys are looking for a dedicated fluke rod from shore, I think you really can't do any better than the Shimano Dialuna. The 9.6 medium is my recommendation. Um, they also make much higher end Suzuki rods. You know, if you want, you can easily spend over a thousand dollars on a surf rod. But for value at that price point, this is hard to beat. I've yet to see anything produced domestically or even offered for sale in this country that does a better job at shore fluke jigging than the Shimano Dialuna and according to my cousin, the Daiwa Labra. All right, so from now until fluke season, I will probably be doing a lot of freshwater fishing as you can tell from my previous videos this year. And my cousin is about to go insane, so. Hopefully he'll find something to occupy his time before the first fluke arrive. Thanks for watching guys.